Algebra 2, we're now in Chapter 8, 8.1a. We're going to solve quadratic equations in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So this is the standard form of a quadratic equation, this ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And we can see by the exponent 2, by this x, that's a second degree equation. We talked about that back in 5.1a, and a link to that video will be in this description. So the definition is an equation of the type ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where the a and the b and the c are constants, and the a doesn't equal a 0. It's called the standard form of a quadratic equation. We talked about this back in Algebra 1 last year. We might not see quadratic equations in standard form. They might not be in standard form. So if you see bx plus ax squared equals c, that's a quadratic equation. It's just not in standard form. Or this one, look at, this is b equals 0. There is no b value, see? It's missing. We just have ax squared plus c equals 0. And remember to rewrite the square root of a negative number. We can factor the radicand, so if we have the square root of negative a, we can factor it as a negative 1 times a, and that'll give us our buddy the i, won't it? We did that in 7.7a, and there'll be a link to that one too in this description if you're confused. So every quadratic polynomial, ax squared plus bx plus c, with complex coefficients, so these coefficients are complex, they can be factored into two linear factors. So if we have 3x squared plus 5x equals 0, see our c value is equal to a 0, we can easily solve this by factoring. To factor this, we can break that x into an x and an x, can't we? And if we put the x on the outside of the parentheses, we don't need that one there, do we? So we just have x times 3x plus 5 equals 0. And then using the principle of zero products, we talked about that in 2.1c. There'll be a link also. We can split this apart to x equals 0 and 3x plus 5 equals 0. We can isolate x on this side by using the addition property, right? By adding a negative 5 to each side. And then we can use a multiplication property to divide both sides by this coefficient 3. So x is isolated as a negative 5 thirds. So we have x equals 0 or x equals a negative 5 thirds. We check it. We plug it into our original equation with the 0, and that works. And as the negative 5 thirds, and that works in place of x squared. So yes. And the numbers check. So the solutions are 0 and negative 5 thirds. A quadratic equation of this type will have 0 as a solution. Sometimes it helps to write it in the standard form before factoring, and that'll make it easier for you, okay? So see how we did that? If you're really confused, try checking out these previous videos, okay? But I think it's pretty straightforward if you've been following along, all right? Make sure you check it just to make sure that one of them is not wrong, okay? Maybe one of them is a solution and one isn't, so you want to check them, don't you? All right, so we can solve x minus 1 times x plus 1 equals 5 times x minus 1, and we FOIL this, we multiply it, we get x squared plus 1x minus 1x minus 1 equals, and we distribute this side, 5x minus 5, and this positive 1x and this negative 1x cancel each other out as additive inverses, don't they? So we have x squared minus 1 on this side, and it equals 5x minus 5. We write it in standard form. We can subtract this as a negative 5x plus 5 to set this to equal 0. And then we have to do it to this side. So we get x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Now it's in standard form. And we factor this. And if you don't remember how to factor trinomials, it's in video 5.5c. And there's a link in this description also. Okay. So now we factor it as x minus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0. And using the principle of zero products, that's video 2.1c again, we isolate the x and we get x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 1. See? See how I did that? All right. When a quadratic equation in standard form like this has b that equals 0. So see, there's no b value. It's a 0. 
So it's ax squared plus c equals zero. We can use the multiplication and addition principles to get an equation in the form of x squared equals k, where x equals the square root of k, or x equals negative square root of k. So if we have 3x squared minus 6 equals 0 using the addition property, we're going to try to isolate this x squared. So we're going to add 6 to both sides, make this a 0 pair right here. So we have 3x squared equals 6. Now we can divide both sides of this equation by this 3 coefficient to isolate that x squared. We could also multiply by 1 third, couldn't we? The, co the reciprocal of the coefficient. I like to divide because I think it's easier when there's no fractions. So that gives us x squared equals a 2, or x equals a negative square root of 2. We can abbreviate this, all of this, as x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. See? That way you don't have to write the or and you don't have to write all of that out. You just abbreviate it like that. All right? So now b is still going to equal 0. Check this out. Sometimes we get solutions that are complex numbers. That means they're going to contain an i, which we just did in chapter 7. So we can solve 4x squared plus 9 equals 0 using the addition property. We want to isolate this x squared, don't we? So we're going to subtract 9 from each side. Or you could say we're going to add a negative 9 to each side. That's going to give us a 0 pair here. So we've got 4x squared equals a negative 9. We want to isolate that x squared so we can divide both sides by this 4 coefficient. We get x squared equals negative 9 fourths. So we have x equals the square root of negative 9 fourths. See, because we took that exponent off, so now we just have an x. So it's this side gets the square root symbol, the radical. Or x equals a negative square root of negative 9 fourths. What we can do is factor this as negative 1 times 9 fourths under the radical sign, or negative 1 times 9 fourths underneath the radical sign on this side with the negative sign in front, see? So now we've got the square root of negative 1, which is our buddy i. We simplify 9 fourths to 3 halves, and we've got 3 halves i, or negative 3 halves i. We can abbreviate it as x equals plus or minus 3 halves i, see? If you're really confused about i, you need to watch chapter 7, all right? We had um, I think 13 videos about the imaginary i and negative 1 and all of that, okay? So, if you've missed anything, you're going to have a tough time climbing this math ladder, okay? When steps are missing, you're going to get all confused and it's going to be very hard. It's so much easier when all the steps are there. Then you just walk up slowly, okay? Our next video, 8.1b, is about quadratic equations again because that's the chapter we're in for 8. I'm going to talk about completing the square. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. Chapter 13, back last year in Algebra 1, talked about quadratic equations. So if you're really lost, there's going to be a link to that playlist so that you could just watch that playlist, okay? And catch up and figure out what you've forgotten. And then all those previous videos that I mentioned, like 2.1c, 5.5c, 7.7a, okay? All those previous videos that I mentioned that were helpful, all these little previous Algebra 2 videos, all those links are going to be in the description also. All right? So if it was too long ago and you're having trouble remembering, take some time to watch a video that's just a few minutes long to remember, and you're going to be all set, okay? Can't remember everything all the time, right? Sometimes we need a little reminding, so it's no big deal. Just watch a video for a few minutes, all right? I hope you're okay. I'll see you next video. Let's complete some squares. Bye.